Tens of millions are tuning in to watch the tournaments. Russians among them, despite the fact their team isn't taking part, is it is, of course, banned from FIFA competitions because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. What you may not know is that Russia is hosting its own international sporting tournament. Right now, this Sunday, is the final day of the BRICS Games in Kazan, but it's not enticing as many viewers. To discuss it, we can welcome Simon Roth, who's a sports diplomacy expert and associate professor of international politics at the University of Leeds. Thanks for speaking to France 24. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. Morning. So are Russians simply more interested in the Euros because they love football? Well, it seems to me that the appeal of sport is universal and it's often been the case that politics will trump uh, the reality of sporting fandom. But on the ground, the fans will watch and consume sport in all sorts of ways. And the Russians who are tuning in to watch top level sport in the centre of Europe are also uh, been tuning in to watch the NBA finals. They've also been tuning in to watch uh, the uh, games in Kazan. So the appeal of sport really is something that we shouldn't underestimate. It's one of the reasons why um, politicians uh, throughout the ages, not just at the moment, will utilise sport to be part of their uh, experience and to shape their own uh, ends. And is this ban on Russia's participation in everything but friendlies, is this a, has had, had a sort of effect of bitterness on the, on the fans' appetite to watch, or are they still just tuning in and, and enjoying the tournament regardless? Well, I think the fans are still interested in sport and the outcomes. Um, they're still going to be supporting teams and players and uh, the opportunity to watch that, that high-level competition. The opportunity that sport um, presents to be used in a political way, you know, the use of boycotts, the 1980 and 84 uh, Olympic Games, which in themselves gave birth to the World Athletics Championships, because sport was such a strong driver that even despite these uh, boycotts at a high level between, from the uh, then uh, Soviet bloc and the Eastern bloc, uh, the West, they still created a sporting event that enabled them to um, uh, compete. And the appeal of competition is something that we shouldn't underestimate. So I think these are difficult decisions for, in some senses, for the athletes participating and for the uh, uh, authorities. Um, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee in uh, Lausanne in Switzerland, is dealing with these issues on a daily basis. And you know, the compromise outcomes when it comes to Paris 24, independent neutral athletes competing, this is how uh, you know, these things are reconciled. It's a challenging environment and you know, the use of um, sport for political means is, again, something not, it's not new. Well, let's talk about then that Russian participation under a neutral banner, or should I should say Russian athletes participating in the Paris Games. Do you have a take on this? Do you think there is a solution which is preferable for you? It's obviously a controversial topic. I mean, there's precedence here. Neutral athletes have competed in you know, recent Olympic Games. Uh, politicians have um, sought to uh, perhaps exploit that. But we've also seen it work in terms of the cause of peace. Remember the 2019 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics where North Korean and South Korean athletes competed alongside each other. Um, and the opportunity that you know, there is in Paris to provide some reconciliation to um, the difficult decisions and difficult scenarios we see in Ukraine and in the Middle East. These are, you know, sport has a role to play. It's not the panacea. It's not, us, you know, going to provide all the solutions, but it's a reason to have a conversation. And if nothing else, the sort of central tenets of sport diplomacy is about having a conversation, providing a space for dialogue. And in those circumstances, we have the opportunity, one that isn't always realised, but we have the opportunity to be able to uh, engage in a, a diplomatic practice which can resolve our differences. And tell us a bit more about the, the BRICS games then. Uh, athletes from almost 90 countries have taken part, even though some of these nations don't actually recognise these games. And perhaps what do these games mean for the Russian athletes that, that get to take part? Well, these are games that, you know, that they come with a, a heavy dose of political patronage. But then sport has always done that. 
uh, you know, the uh, BRICS Games provides opportunities for other uh, participating nations. It's a platform, you know, the sporting, you know, in certain sports, the sporting level will be very high because of the, of the nature of those competing. Equally, we shouldn't underestimate how much the the alternative, um, you know, this is a precursor to the Olympic Games in some uh, athletes' eyes, and, and the quality of some of the teams that have been um, sent, you know, represents that, um, you know, second tier of, of competition. Uh, that's by no means to uh, denigrate any of the, the athletes and their endeavours, but simply to say that, you know, one of the functions of, you know, a major sporting event is to blend that cultural sporting political uh, dimension and therefore if you've got a hundred and uh, sorry 90 uh, odd countries then you know that's approximately half of the members of the the IOC so you've got half the level of um, com competitors mm. and we've just seen the the games these BRICS games wrapping up this Sunday would you say overall they've been a success for Russia well I think in some senses they're success if we're talking about them so, you know, the fact that they're worthy of discussion, they provide an opportunity to talk about Russia that isn't talking about um, the campaign in Ukraine. It provides an opportunity to you know, talk about um, something other than uh, Mr. Putin himself. This this is a, you know, a, an opportunity and, and sports, you know, whether you agree with it or not, provides that that space for an alternative dialogue. Now, the impact on Russian athletes is an opportunity to compete at a high level. Um, and, you know, that's that that's to their benefit, whether they're able to take this competition to other spaces to you know, work in other ways. Um, you know, we'll wait and see. All right, Simon Roth, thank you very much um, for taking part in this discussion on France 24. Thank you. Take care.